and welcome to the Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is cultivating curiosity. And if we can live in a state of curiosity, what occurs as a result of that is discovery and learning and wonder. And so we're going to delve into uh, this, this notion of expanding our experience and elevating our, our frequency through this cultivation of wonder and curiosity. So before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant, bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, all your molecules, all your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue, and now let's press our palms together. Vigorously rub your hands together. Feel the friction, the temperature, the motion, the pressure, and the tickling and tingling when you stop. And allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So we're talking about cultivating curiosity. Good morning. Good morning, Rosalind. Welcome. So good to have you joining us this morning. And welcome to everybody else who's here with us. Um, cultivating curiosity as a means of accessing learning and discovery. And what I'm here to talk about today is cultivating curiosity about all the situations that arise in our lives. So when we, when we experience an upset, if we can stand back, we can, and look at that upset, we can utilize it and employ it as a vehicle of growth and change. Uh, when we look at wow, I really got upset about that. What was that all about? What's going on underneath that? What were the feelings attendant to that? Who, what would I have to believe or, or perceive in order to have that kind of response? What's going on? Where might that have come from? Uh, this cultivated curiosity can give us a richer engagement with life and can be the doorway for us to gain greater awareness and greater insight into ourselves, into dynamics of relationship, into the magic of the world even, you know, to, to um, look at, I had a really wonderful, wonderful conversation yesterday and um, one of one of the things that came up in that conversation, the person that I was speaking with said that um, there was a teaching where they had been invited to make another species their teacher for a year, which I thought was such a, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful idea. What a really cool idea. And uh, this person chose to make a plant, a particular plant, their teacher. And 
over the course of the year, they interacted with, observed, very, very closely observed this plant. And they said that they learned so much about resilience, about um, life, about adaptation, about um, adjusting and, and just the, the, the experience of being and were attuned to all these subtleties. And I thought, wow, what a, what a beautiful, beautiful invitation to accept, to choose another species to learn from. And I was so fascinated that they chose to learn from a plant and this particular plant and cultivated such a deep relationship with it. It was just out of the box kind of thinking and allowing us to find a pay, space of curiosity and humility to step away from the knowingness that so much, so many of us live in, not, not true authentic wisdom necessarily, but I know this, I know that it is this way, it is that way, things are fixed rather than mutable, um, looking at the uh, concrete, the material rather than expanding into the, um, the multi-dimensional experiences that are available to us. Also part of this conversation, it was such a great conversation uh, with Nina Simons, who I'm interviewing for Sustainability Now. Nina Simons is uh, one of the co-founders. She and her husband, Kenny Asabel, Asabel um, founded Bioneers uh, more than I, th I think 25 years ago, more than 20 years ago. And um, it, it, we just, it, we just had this great, great, great conversation. And now I'm trying to remember what the other piece was that I wanted to share with you that was so awesome. Um, there were so many, so many aspects to the conversation. Okay. So um, she was quoting a, uh, I don't know if he was a physicist or a philosopher who said that the sense experience, the five sense experience that we have in our lives is like the froth on the top of the ocean. And that in fact, we're experiencing all kinds of other input and sense sensibilities sensing that is not necessarily reaching our conscious awareness and that that is what is beneath the surface and and or that that is the body of the ocean that that you know that our our Sense experiences like the froth and the body of the ocean is the other dimensions of experience and um, being that is part of who we are. And um, she said that that was the part that she was most interested in exploring. And I feel that way too, that that, that is what we're doing in these conversations, in our, our uh, quest for awareness, growth, enlightenment, awakening, that what we're doing is looking to be swimming in the greater water of the ocean. And um, rather than dancing around on the froth at the top, and there, there's so much richness there. You know, when we recognize that we are sensing um, gravitational 
shifts and magnetic field shifts and um, feel it, the frequencies of all the different electrical devices that we have and radio waves and and thoughts thoughts have frequencies and we sense those as well and we connect we have these energetic connections with one another that are activated in different ways and some of us are more attuned to them than others and getting curious opens the door getting curious allows us to step beyond our our limits to step beyond our boundaries and so stuff comes up in our lives that is triggering and activating and maybe tragic and and um maybe painful and uh, even in those, even in those situations, what if we were to get curious? So another session that I had yesterday was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. It's interesting to see how different people work with the core connection process, and some people just process through so quickly and so profoundly. It was amazing. So. This session that I'm thinking of now was with someone who experienced really traumatic growing up with a mother who was very abusive um, and would, would hit this person with the heel of their boot, um, dug nails into their skin to draw to the point of drawing blood. Um, said horrible things to them, was incredibly critical, just devastating, devastating thing to grow up with. And uh, we were working on this. Uh, we weren't even working directly with the relationship with the mother. We were working on the fact that the mother was so deeply critical. And what ended up happening through the course of the session was that this person recognized, and this is such a big leap, recognized that all those things that happened were essential to their own becoming. They were essential to them being who they are and having the capacity to be able to help others, to support others, that had these things not occurred, they wouldn't be who they are. They wouldn't have the capacities that they do. They wouldn't have the capability to have the presence that they do with others. And in in this process too in the process of being curious of being willing to explore this this dynamic uh, they also recognized and experienced a deep compassion for the pain that their mother had felt must have felt and and what could drive a person to be that way you know the experience that 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 mother had in her life that would drive her to be such a, a toxic influence. And what's, what's so beautiful about that is that the client was able to have gratitude and appreciation for the mother and for that dance that they did together the roles that they played together because it created this space of transformation it it created the capabilities in the client to be able to support others in a way that they never would have been able to had they not had 
the intensity of that kind of experience and come through it to the other side. So the curiosity, the willingness to look and say, what's going on there? What's that about? And to be able to be present to it without a judgment, a ruling judgment that is dictating um, the, the, the worth or lack of worth of that kind of um, inquiry. You know, it's, it's amazing what shows up. It wasn't, uh, this, this conversation came out of looking, here's where the curiosity piece comes in, came out of looking at this person, the client's relationship with someone else and noticing that they got really triggered by this other person. And this other person was judgmental and they felt judged by that person. And um, as we started being curious and investigating further, like, well, what's that about? You know, is it that they're reminding you of parts of yourself that you don't like? These are things, and it turned out that this client also noticed where they were really judgmental and how they they were critical of people that worked with them and then we traced it back and they had this awareness oh my gosh that's what my mother did to me throughout my whole life and then we were able to relieve that dynamic and in relieving the dynamic, the person that initially triggered the client was someone that they were now able to have an experience of compassion and love for. So pretty, pretty amazing what the willingness to be curious can create for us. So I say that curiosity is an antidote for judgment. Instead of judging, what happens if we get curious? Like, what is it that's going on that is creating this situation or that is showing up in this way? And um, curiosity is also the gateway to wonder. And to me, wonder, wonder is one of the most, my most highly... revered values to be living in a world of wonder to allow ourselves to rise to the i'm going to say rise to the innocence of seeing things anew to rise to the openness to not know, to be willing to be in the question rather than the answer. There's so much more available to us. The answer is fixed. The answer is an endpoint. This goes back to uh, the notion of life being process rather than product, rather than an outcome. That to be living in the process rather than to be living in goals or objectives, you know, that are pretty black and white, that are time delimited, that are um, finite, rather to live in a space of intention that is honoring the process rather than the outcome. Uh, and if we are able to shift our perspective from outcome to process, outcome is kind of objectifying our experience. It's kind of, um, what's the word? It's 
downplaying, minimizing, um, discarding the experience in the name of the outcome. Uh, and the fact is that our lives occur in the experience and the outcomes are kind of incidental. Um, the experience, the process of a journey, the journey itself, rather than the destination. If you're if you're on the journey and the journey is irrelevant and all that's relevant is the destination, it's likely that there's going to be a lot of suffering on the journey because there's going to be the impatience to get where you're going and I just want to be there already and um, there's no ability to be a, be present with the life that is occurring in the process of getting to the destination. So if we can become curious, we can open the door to all kinds of amazing experiences. So, oh, I love this, Rosalind. I agree. Rosalind says, when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Curious to look at what labels we assign to things and even ourselves. Yes, yes, yes. So when, thank you so much for that, Rosalind. When we get curious, we can start exposing the things that are always there that we didn't notice. And as we expose the things that are always there that we didn't notice, we have entree into whole new worlds and new perspectives and new experience. It's really quite amazing how life can open up and start to flow as a result of allowing ourselves to even begin to perceive some of these things that are guiding our lives that we didn't even know were there. So very interestingly, oh, this was another really powerful session. So um, I have another client who had an extremely traumatic childhood. Um, I say that, I don't think that they say that at this point, but living in a war-torn country and, and um, leaving that country and experiencing life-threatening situation that required their family to leave. And there's a pattern in their lives, kind of, of leaving. Like as it's a life-saving measure, but they had never made this connection. And um, it wasn't until we had this conversation where they told me about this in their childhood, they said, eh, I think I've pretty much resolved it. You know, like I'm fine with it. And there wasn't any overt conscious emotion around it. And and then we dug in and we did a session and um, there was there was a direct connection um, and there was emotion there and experience there that they hadn't even realized that they buried because one of the things that I've noticed with uh, the work that I do with people is Usually it's either at the very end of the first cohort or sometime after the second or into the third where, or maybe even later that we start getting down to work around issues that are so present, so deep and so they're like the underlying tone and because they're the ever-present underlying tone, they're almost, they're imperceptible. They're not recognizable by the person I'm working with. And it takes getting down to, you know, go, going through maybe peeling away layers 
to be able to get to this underlying tone. And I was explaining that to this person that I just mentioned. And they said, well, let's not wait till the third cohort. Let's, you know, let's, let's do this now. And um, it, it was, it was really quite remarkable, really, really quite remarkable to see um, how, of course, our experiences as children shape us. It's how we learn to relate to the world. And we don't even know that it's not normal, right? Until we get a contrast later in life. And those lessons stay with us and, and provide that underlying tone. When we can shift that underlying tone, everything changes. Everything changes. So I invite you to really open yourself to curiosity when you notice that you're having an intense emotion an intense reaction or even if it's just a flash that passes i invite you to be curious and maybe explore it because that's a gift of your other than conscious awareness to say okay maybe you're ready to deal with this now this is an opportunity for you to dig more deeply, to heal something, to grow, to learn something, to experience a new dimension of awareness. It's an opportunity and a gift. And so I think that's it for today. I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. And I go live each weekday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern here on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel. And I invite you to check out the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network and Enlightened World Living. And I'm so grateful to you for this opportunity each morning to share these thoughts, meanderings, ideas, musings. And I so, so, so deeply appreciate you. So until next time, so much love to you.